beautiful gown, Mrs. Van Allen. I think it's positively hideous. I rather like it, my dear. Harvey, will you be quiet? Yes, my dear. Don't stand there staring at me. Send that girl away. Oh, that will be all, Marie. And tell Yvonne to hurry. Mrs. Van Allen is a most insulting snob. I'd like to scratch her eyes out. She better not make any cracks at me. I'm in no mood for it. Jessica, my darling, it's way past our closing time. Can't we come back tomorrow? I shall leave when I'm ready, and not one minute sooner. All right, dear. I don't see how that poor husband stands her. I don't see how that poor dog stands either one of them. Yvonne? Yes, I'm coming. This gown is an exclusive importation. Isn't it exquisite? I'm sure I don't know. Perhaps I might answer you if it were properly modeled by someone with a better figure. Is that so? Well, well I... I do want you to notice the back. How you want any more crack from that old goat face well, now? How it has the new slashed back. I don't like it at all. Take it away. You may go, Yvonne, and tell Peggy to hurry. Gee, Peggy, you look beautiful. Ah, oh, thanks, Jimmy. I'm a lucky guy. Turn around. Hold it. Oh, Jimmy! Oh, that's the last time I'll model for that octopus. You all right? Oh, Jimmy! Oh, darling, let me help. Never mind, I'll help him. Oh. Well, somebody help me. What's the matter with Jimmy? You? What's the matter with you? Don't you trust me? Frankly, no. And by the way, what are you dressed up for? Belle of the Gay 90s? Yes, brings back memories of your girlhood days, doesn't it? Well, you little oh, girl, girl, girl. Girl. Jessica, hey, dear. Hey, Quiet, please. Hey, hey. Madam Celeste, why are we having to wait? We can't stay here all night, you know. Well, if you excuse me, please, I'll go see. It must be something about the dress. Hurry, please. Hey, hey, hey! Hey, hey! Get it, hurry! Peggy, Mrs. Van Allen is waiting. Oh, yes, I'm sorry. Oh, yes, that's right, Peggy. Go ahead and uh, don't worry about Jimmy. I'll take care of him. Oh, you can't. Oh, let me add her for just one second. Jimmy, you forgot this. Thanks, Yvonne. Well, that's all right, Jimmy. Will you please turn around? Oh, I, I'm sorry, yes. This girl is impossible, and the gown is atrocious. Why, Mrs. Van Allen, how can you say such a thing? I think this gown would be perfectly stunning for your great-granddaughter. Great-granddaughter? How dare you? Peggy, Mrs. Van Allen is buying this gown for herself. Oh, I'm so sorry. I wasn't modeling it right. This is the way I would model it for you, Mrs. Van Allen. Oh! Oh! Oh, I've never been so insulted in all my life. But Mrs. Van Allen. Oh. Yes, dearie. Good night, Madam Celeste. Good night. Oh. oh, you! And you! Why don't you watch out where you're going? Mm. Yes, dearie. Guess that takes care of that Mrs. Horseface Van Allen. And as for you, I'm telling you for the last time, stay away from my Jimmy. What is it, darling? Afraid you can't hold him? One more crack like that and I'll mess up that two-face of yours. Listen, I could have that Jimmy of yours any time I snap my finger. Oh, is that so? Yes, that's so. Say, sister, you're just flirting with a punch in the nose. Lady, you start swinging and I'll start swinging, too. Oh, yeah, well, you've been asking for it. You're gonna get it. Yeah, you're, you're a girl. Girl. Peggy, cut it out. Well, you tell that female whelp to stay away from my Jimmy or I'll take care of her and I'm not petty. <laughs> oh, yes, Marie, I'm sorry. You, you, catch you. Now, I want to talk to you. Uh-oh. Are you ready to talk with me, Mr. O'Brien? About whom? What? About whom? What? You know very well I'm talking about your scandalous love affair with Yvonne. Love affair? What are you talking about? I'm with you all the time. If I'm making love to Yvonne, I must be doing it by long distance. 
Oh, so you've been telephoning her. Peggy, you know very well you're the only one in the world for me. Well, then why did you tell Yvonne she was sweet? Oh, it was nothing. It was just a figure of speech. Well, not the way I figure it. All right, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll sneak up behind Yvonne, put my hands around her neck, and, and strangle her. Hiya, Mac. I put the automatic lock on the door. Be sure to slam it shut when you leave. Okay, Mac. Jimmy, you're clowning, but I'm serious. And I'm not clowning either. You'll have to cut out this foolishness. I'm tired of it. Oh, so you're tired, are you? Well, so far as I'm concerned, you need never be fatigued on my account again, Mr. O'Brien. Goodbye, and I mean goodbye. Wait a minute, Peggy. I'll get my hat and coat and be right with you. Little you told me, I know most of you here are glad that Yvonne Brewster's put out of the way. But you haven't told me the whole truth. And don't think you're getting away with anything, because I'll get it out of you if I have to keep you here all night. So somebody better start talking. All right, Inspector. I'll be glad to. Peggy. Now, just a minute. Oh, thank you. That's all I need. Just a minute. Now, Peggy, I'll... be quiet. Well, don't worry, Jimmy. When I get through explaining, I just dare him to put you in jail. Don't say that. Listen, if it's just the same to you, do you mind if I conduct this investigation? All right, but that's doing it the hard way, you know. Madam Celeste, what time did you leave the store? Oh, I think it was about 6.20. The doorman and I left together. That's right. The watchman let us out. I see. Mr. Duvall, you were the real owner of this store. Yes, I am Madame Celeste. Madam? Could that be, Chiefy? Uh, Mr. Duvall, there's one question I want to ask you. Did you... Inspector. Uh, Madame Celeste, that is, this Madame Celeste, used to be married to uh, Mr. Duvall, that Madame Celeste. Yvonne came between them. So, you see, she had every reason in the world for killing Yvonne. Oh, Peggy, how dare you? I'm tired of your meddling. You see, the truth hurts. Listen, will you please be quiet while I try to figure these things out? Yeah, be quiet while the inspector's figuring. You know it's hard for him to figure. Shut up. Mr. Davis, uh, you knew Yvonne Brewster quite well, didn't you? Yes, we were practically engaged. Oh, Inspector, Yvonne told me she was in love with Mr. Davis. I knew it was true love on account of his big bankroll. Get it? Will you please don't interrupt? Yappity, yappity, yap. Can't you see you're only making things worse? Well, that's gratitude for you. I... Look, buddy, you got to keep this girl quiet or get out of here. Good, let's go. Now, wait a minute. Sit down. You got me so upset, I don't know where I am. You're in Madame Celestine's shop. I know where I am. But you just said you didn't know where you was, Chief. Will you be quiet? Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Van Allen, you were the last two customers to leave the store. It was around closing time, wasn't it? Yes, sir. It was after closing time. I told my wife... Will you be quiet? I told you when we left the store, we were the last customers, I suppose. Well, now, another thing I want to... Don't interrupt. I haven't finished. I may say again that I resent being thrown among criminals, and I demand to go at once. You'll go, and I'll tell you you're ready to go. Yeah, and you won't go until the TV says you can go. Because when the TV says you can go, that's the only... All right, all right, they're convinced. Yap, yap, yapping. Well, I've got to tell them, don't I? And you, Miss... Uh... Marie, Marie Lewis. Yes, you were the first employee to leave the building? Yes, I left about five minutes after six. I was expecting someone to call for me, and I was waiting outside. Did you see anyone leave the building? Yes. Who was it? Madame Celeste. Oh. And you... Uh... To your knowledge, did you hear or see anyone leave after the others left? No. Would be any chance for anybody to get in or out through the rear of the building? No, sir. Everything was locked up tight. And that's the way I found it after the body was discovered. I see. And what was it you heard Jimmy O'Brien say to Peggy Rooney in the hallway? He said, I'll walk up behind Yvonne, put my hands around her throat and strangle her. That's a lie. Jimmy didn't say that. He said, I'll sneak up behind her. That did it. Ah. 
Well, everybody seems to have a pretty good alibi but you, Mr. O'Brien, so I'm holding you for the murder of Yvonne Brewster. But I tell you, I didn't do it. Of course he didn't do it. Yes, I know, I know, but I'm taking you in just the same. Now, wait a minute, Inspector. Any one of these people had a better reason for killing Yvonne than Jimmy, Madame Celeste, Mr. Duvall, Mr. Davis. And I suppose Mr. and Mrs. Van Allen. Well, you have to admit she's got the face of a murderess. <gasps> what? Inspector, I refuse to stay here any longer and be insulted. Don't worry, Mrs. Van Allen, I'm going to let you go. I got a pretty good idea who the guilty party is. In fact, you're all free to go. Good night. Oh, well, good night. Except you. Oh, Sit down. down. Let's be glad to get out of here. Please. Sir, it's quiet. You talk too much all the time. Come on, son. Oh, well, now, wait a minute. Look, son, it's a way past my bedtime, and it puts me in an ugly mood. And I don't want no trouble with you. Come on. Inspector, I tell you, Jimmy is innocent. Listen, you can talk all night long. As far as I'm concerned, he's the murderer, and I'm turning him over to the DA. But, Mr. Inspector, I, Mr. Hare, at least give us a chance to explain. Jimmy was downstairs alone. And a body was sent down by the dumbwaiter. There you go with that dumbwaiter story again. I told you I don't believe in stories, only this one. You were madly in love with Yvonne. She was going with Davis, wouldn't give him up because he had more dough than you had, and in a fit of mad frenzy jealousy, you strangle her with that stocking. Well, if that isn't stupid. Huh? Oh, what I mean is that what you just said, Inspector, oh, just doesn't make sense. What she all. means is, from the time she left me in the basement until I called her and Mac, what, it just didn't take a minute. So what? So this, Inspector. Do you mean to tell me Jimmy could go up the stairs, go into the dressing room... Look for a stocking, tie it around Yvonne's neck, strangle her, pick up her body, take it out in the hall, put her body in the dumbwaiter, run the dumbwaiter down, Go downstairs, take the body out. Put it in the hamper, roll the hamper into the middle of the basement. Go upstairs, deliberately rock myself in the middle of the room. And then say to himself, I'll sit here and wait for Inspector O'Hara. Now, Inspector, I ask you, does that make sense, hmm? Say, I think they got something there, Chiefy. Shut up. As far as I'm concerned, you're guilty, and I'm turning you over to the DA. When we tell him what we just told you, he let us go just like that. Inspector, you know in your heart Jimmy's innocent. Look at him. Why, he wouldn't hurt a fly. He'll lose his job. He'll probably never get another one. He'll be disgraced. Oh, we had such great plans. We were going to have a little home and a big family and then get married. I beg of you, Inspector, please let him go. We'll Robin. never bother you again. We want to go back to our work Robin. and be good, law-abiding citizens and, and, and pay our income tax and our Social Security and our old age tax and our luxury tax and all our other tax. And don't forget the policeman's fund. Yeah, on the policeman's fun. Oh, Inspector, as a woman who sees everything tumbling down on top of her, I plead with you. All right, both of you, get out of here. Gee, thanks. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but stick around close. Oh, we will, Inspector, dear, we will, because... Because we're going right back to our jobs. You're a kind man, Inspector, a very kind man. Bless you again and again. And again. <laughs> and again. Well, put that over, didn't I, Grogan? Come in. Excuse me, kids. Oh, it's you. No, where are we? Let's see. We'll start with K. 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 L. L. M. M. N. N. O. O. P. P. Well, what goes P. on here? Oh, don't bother us, Jimmy. Oh, fine. Here I am, a murder suspect, and you play quiz games. Oh, this is all for you, Jimmy. Well, let me know when you get to the $64 question. Listen, Marie heard Yvonne mention a man's name, and we believe he might be the murderer. What was her name? Well, that's just it. She can't think of it. We'll play the alphabet game. Oh, we just did that. Well, we'll do it again. Oh. A. A. B. C. C. D. D. E. E. F. F. G. G. H. H. I. I. J. J. K. J. She stopped on J. Oh, yeah, but don't you see J stands for Jimmy? Yeah. Swinger, sister. Yeah. L. M. N. N. O. O. C. Q. Q. R. R. S. S. T. T. U. U. Marie, don't B. you realize that we're waiting for you? Yes, Madame Celeste, coming. Oh, wait just a minute, Madame Celeste. Marie was just telling me something very important. It's about Yvonne's death. If she can think of a certain name, Jimmy will be clear. Oh, uh, we haven't time for such nonsense. Marie is imagining things. Jimmy, go back to your work. Yes, ma'am. Hurry, Marie. And Peggy, you put on that purple gown. And hurry. Oh, all right. A, purple gown, blue gown. What did she say? A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Oh, gee. A, B, C, D, E. Oh, purple gown. Yes. Mr. and Mrs. Van Allen, I'm so happy to see you. Happy indeed. Well, give it to me, sending me a gown without making the alterations. Oh, I'm so sorry, but we're all upset. You know, the murder. I'll take care of it. Won't you sit down? Yes, thank you. We're leaving. And see to it that my gown is delivered as quickly as possible, won't you? I will, Mrs. Van Allen. 
Harvey. Oh, Mr. and Mrs. Van Allen. How do you do? How do you do? That's Mr. Davis. I know it. Maud, send out for Mrs. Van Allen's dress. And this time, make all the alterations. Oh, why, Mr. Davis. How do you do, Madam Celeste? I must see Mr. Duvald. Is he in? Yes, he's in his office. Is there anything wrong? Oh, I'd rather not discuss it here. Oh, very well. Go right up. Come along. I want you to hear what I have to say. Hello, Mr. Davis. Mr. Davis wants to see you. It's very important. Uh, what is it, Mr. Davis? I came for Yvonne's brooch. What brooch? It's a large basket design with many diamonds. Yvonne brought the brooch to me and said it was worth 25,000 and she could buy it for 15. I see. I gave Yvonne the money and she purchased the brooch. Now, under the circumstances, I'm sure you both agree that the brooch belongs to me. Yes, we do, mm -hmm. Mr. Davis. Of course. But uh, what makes you think it's here in the store? Well, it's not in her apartment. I've already searched there. And when you find the brooch and turn it over to me, I'll give you $5,000. That's very generous of you. We'll search the place and if the brooch is here, you shall have it. Oh, thank you. $25,000. Don't mention this to anyone in the store. We'll handle this ourselves. Understand? Halbert, Halberty, Albertson. Oh, Peggy, if I go through this whole book, I'll be here for a month. Never mind that. I'll stay here with you. All go right. ahead. All Britain. All Britain. Yes, yes, yes. I used to know a boy by that name. Cute, too. Oh, that's awful. Never Peggy. Mind. Oh, just Aldrich. a minute, please. She's looking for Aldrich. the name. Will you Aldrich. please come out and model that gown? All right, Madam Celeste, I'll be right there. Mrs. Hamilton Aldrich. is waiting. All right. Aldrich. Now, you go through that book. Oh, all right. Alan, 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 Alan. Do you realize how many Alans there are in this book? That's nothing. Wait till you get to the Joneses. Or the oh, Smiths. Alan, Alan. Peggy, will you please turn round? Oh, yes. I believe that you'll be perfectly satisfied with this gown, Mrs. Hamilton. And particularly, I want you to notice the neckline. Oh, where did you get that? What? The brooch. Oh, oh, this I got it in the costume jewelry box. Why, oh, oh, what's the matter, Mrs. List? Oh, uh, nothing, nothing. But it just doesn't go with that gown. I have a pink gown that I'd like you to see. Peggy, uh, hurry, hurry, go put on the pink gown. Well, the model will be here soon. Will you excuse me, please? Yes, but don't be too long. Jack, I just saw it. What? The brooch. Where? On a gown that Peggy was modeling. Are you sure it's the one? I'm almost positive. Oh, this is very interesting. Fifteen thousand dollars. Oh, oh, where's the brooch? Where's Peggy? Where's Shh, the gown? Jack, keep your voice down and don't get so excited. I told Peggy to take the gown off. Fine, fine. Yes, that's right. We must not get excited. No. Well, what are you doing standing there? Come on, let's go. No, no, this way, this way. This well, way. don't get excited. Don't get excited. Be calm. Jack. Oh, 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 yes, yes. What is it, a fire? No, Mr. Duval wants to see the gown you just modeled. Oh, is that all? Oh, uh, hurry, uh, hurry. Uh, 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 I mean, will you please get it and bring it to my office at once? Oh, yes. Come on. Hey, what is this, something new? All you need to buy a dress is thirty-nine fifty and a bodyguard. Quiet, quiet. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? You've got it. I don't mean that, you stupid girl. I mean the brooch. Where is the brooch? Oh, the brooch. Mr. Duval means the, uh, the costume jewelry, the ornament that was on the left shoulder. It goes so well with the gown. Oh, that? Oh, well, I threw that back in the costume jewelry box. Threw it? She threw it! We must hunt for it. No, no, no. Phone Mr. Davis. Tell him we have found it. That is, we will find it, and I'll go and look for it with Peggy. Oh, can't it go on the floor? Excuse me. I don't know what we're playing, but it isn't fun. Now, where did you put it? Where did you put it? Right there, of course. You stupid girl. Why all this fuss over a piece of junk? Junk, she says. 
Oh, mm. Did you get stuck? I think I did. But it's in this store someplace, and I'll find it if I have to turn the store and everybody in it inside out. What's the matter? Did you give him a hot foot? No. He acted awfully queer about a piece of costume jewelry. He called it a brooch. A brooch? Yeah. And he had Madame Celeste call Mr. Davis about it. I've got it, Jimmy. It has something to do with Yvonne's death, and Mr. Davis is in on it, too. Davis? Well, he's the last one I'd suspect. You think I'm crazy, don't you? And don't answer that till I've finished. It's between Duval, Celeste, and Davis. Well, maybe you're right, but let's let the police figure it out, huh? Oh, no, Jimmy, it can't wait. So long as this brooch might be elite, let's follow through. All right. Then we have to have a form of elimination to figure out which of the three had the strongest motive for killing Yvonne. Yeah. Number one, Duval. We know he couldn't gain anything by it. So, suppose I eliminate Duval. For Davis, I don't agree with you about him either. And as for Madame Celeste committing the murder, I can't see that. So, we don't know any more than we did before. But we do, Jimmy, don't you see? I just got through telling you. I wish that you two would go back to work instead of standing around talking all the time. I told you more than an hour ago that Mrs. Patterson is waiting for her dress. Will you deliver it? Yes, ma'am. Well, did you get it? Where is it? I wish I knew. But Peggy said she put it in the jewelry box. She doesn't know where she put it. She's so stupid. She may be, but I'm not. Jack, if you try to do me out of any I of my... assure you that I didn't find it. And if I had, what would make you think that I would try and do you out of your share? Because I happen to know that you have every chance of losing this store unless you get some money. I know that, but I didn't find it, believe me. Maybe you did and maybe you didn't. But I also am desperate for money. Do you understand that? Where are you going, Peggy? Going with you, Jimmy. You mean in the truck? Yes. Ah, uh -uh. I'll call for you later. Oh, no. We're going to Mr. DeVal's house right now. Maybe we'll find something there. What do you think we'll find? Oh, there's no telling, but like I said upstairs, I've got a hunch that DeVal was in, in some way connected with Yvonne. Well, maybe a letter or something. Come on, we got to hurry before DeVal catches up with okay. us. Okay. This time, Jimmy, we really got something. You think so, huh? Oh, I know so. We never had anything like this before. I'd like to see Inspector O'Hara's face when we drop this in his lap. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a motorcycle cop. Somebody's going to get a ticket. Um, it is a motorcycle cop. And it looks like we're the ones who are going to get the ticket. Well, what for? What did I do? I don't know, but you better stop. Now, Jimmy, you better let me do the talking. If you don't mind, I'll take this one. Friday? Yes, sir. One of your back doors is open. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. I thought you'd like to know. I was afraid you might have an accident or lose something out of your truck. I had a lot of trouble with this door. What's the matter? It seems to be warped or something. Let me see. There's nothing wrong there. You just have to force it. That's what's stopping it, that leg. A body. A, a what? A body. It's Mr. Duval. What's he doing in there? You're asking me. Looks like I ran onto something pretty good here. You've got a lot of nerve caught in a body through the streets. No, wait. I'm just as surprised about this as you are. That man was my boss. He owns Madame Celeste's fashion shop. Madame Celeste? Yeah. There was a girl murdered there last night, wasn't there? Yeah. And you worked there, huh? That's right. Looks like you've been getting in a lot of work there. Dirty work. Come on, let's get your girlfriend. My, my what? You heard me the girl with you. Well, no, she didn't have anything to do with it. She, she's just a stranger. I picked her up for the ride. She was running away from home. Running away. Run away. Run away. Cut out the shouting and let's go. <laughs> Boy, how she can run. 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 All right, let's. 
She did run away. So you tipped her off to make a getaway, huh? Well, she won't get far. Get in that truck. We're going to the station and no funny stuff. Davis, you had a talk with Mr. Duval this afternoon. That's right. What did you talk about? Oh, primarily about Yvonne, her death. Naturally, I'm interested. Would like to see the murderer apprehended. Well, this beats all. Two people killed in the store during business hours. Nobody did it because you're all pals. Surely somebody must have heard something. Oh, uh, pardon me, Inspector. Yeah? What is it? Before the murder, I saw Jimmy and Peggy in the hallway. And I heard Jimmy say, suppose I eliminate Duval. Did you say that? Well, yes, I did, but I didn't mean it the way it sounded. Peggy and I were only trying to figure things out. You know, we'd talk about one and do away with that one until we... Yes, yeah, so and you do away with everybody. Well, if you don't believe me, why don't you ask Madame Celeste why she and Duval were so nervous and excited right after Davis left the store? Oh, well, I didn't realize that I was any more excited than, than I usually am on a busy day. Well, I noticed it when you and Duval came dashing out of Peggy's dressing room. Oh, that. Well, uh, Jimmy is right, Inspector. We were a little upset. You see, I had made a mistake and delivered a gown that Mr. Duvall had promised to someone else. That's all. Inspector, you want to see me? Who are you? Marie Lewis. I'm a model at Madame Celeste. Oh, yes. When was the last time you saw Mr. Duvall? This afternoon as I was leaving. Why? Why? Because he was killed. Oh, no. Oh, yes. I'll call you if I need you. You can all go. Good night. Good night. Not you. Oh, Miss Lewis, could I uh, drop you someplace? That's very kind of you, Mr. Davis, but I happen to be going right by Marie's apartment. It won't apartment. be necessary. I have several things to do before going home. Good night. Come on, young man. But, Inspector, you've got to listen to me. I will if you come clean. I have nothing to confess. Ah, uh, lock him up. Come on, young boy. Inspector, you're making a big mistake. Oh, I'm making a mistake. Yeah, but you ought to be used to it by now. Get out of here. Come on. I thought you'd never get here. I came as soon as I got your call. Well, did you find the name? Not yet, but I'm up the ages. Well, you've just got to keep working to... You... Where did you get this? Why, out of the costume jewelry box. It is. Is what? I'm sure. Yvonne wore this, and I wore it today. This is what the balance list was so excited about today. What, that piece of junk? Say, for your information, this little thing is very valuable. It must be, because whoever has it comes to a bad end. Yvonne had it the night she was killed. Deval wanted it, and he was killed. Here, take it. Now that you mention it, I had a feeling I was being followed tonight. Really? Well, then this must be it. Now, if you can just think of the name, we can't miss being Jimmy. I'm trying hard to. Believe me, Peggy, I am. But it takes time. I know, but in the meantime, Jimmy's in jail. But he's not going to stay there. I'll get him out. Peggy, you can't go near that place. You're a fugitive and they'll put you in. No, they won't. I'll disguise myself. I don't know how, but I'll get him out of there if I have to burn that jailhouse down. All right, come on. Why don't you fess up? You were taking the body out in the country to bury it. What are you talking about? I told you nine times I didn't even know the body was in the truck. You expect me to believe... Hello, O'Hara speaking. Okay, I'll be right down. I gotta step out for a minute. You stay here. No tricks. Good evening. Uh, what can I do for you, ma'am? I want to see my grandson. Who is your grandson, Granny? His name is Jimmy O'Brien. That mug? I mean, is that boy your grandson, Granny? That's my grandson, son. Your grandson is in the inspector's office now. Oh, thank you. Oh, but you can't go in there, Granny. You look like a kind soul. And I'm sure even a man like you must have had a mother. And your mother had a mother, too. So you must realize a grandmother's feelings. Well, I sure do, Granny. 
Well, then, will you help me? I certainly will, Granny. Bless you, my son. Bless you, my Granny. You sit there, and I'll tell the inspector you're here. Thank so you. Comfortable. Yes, sir. Hey, where's the inspector? He went out for a while. Uh -huh. Your grandmother's outside. My what? Your grandmother. I'll quit your ribbon. So you'll be more respectful. What are you talking? Uh-oh. I bet it's Peggy. Huh? What'd you say? I better go out and speak to Grandma. Oh, no. No, no. You sit right here and wait until the inspector comes back. Say, do you smell something, Boynton? Yeah. Oh. Hey, look. The joint's on fire. Help! Help! Hey, somebody's yelling for help. Help! Hey, hey, what's going on here? What is it? It's a fire, but a big fire. You better call a fire department. Yeah, I better call the police department. What? Well, I am the police department. I'm Somebody better help me get out of here. Say, you better help your granny outside the safe. Come on, my son. This is something, isn't it? Yeah, that's what I'm afraid of. Go. Look, I want to show you something. Look at this. Where'd you get that? Oh, I got it from Marie. I think it's very important. That's what Duval was looking for before he was killed. Yeah? Yeah. It must be worth thousands of dollars to cause murder. Peggy, we got to get rid of this thing. Don't be silly. We can't get rid of that. I bet Inspector O'Hare would like to know we've got it. That's just what I was thinking. Well, we can't stay here, and you've got to get rid of those silly clothes. Yeah. Oh, we could go to Marie's apartment. I could borrow something from her. Yeah. And they wouldn't think of looking for us there. And maybe she's thought of the name. Yeah. Let's go. This is her apartment. Peggy, don't you think we'd better talk this over? Shh. Marie! Marie! It's open. Breaking out of jail, breaking into other people's apartments. Oh, come on. Well, she's not here. Let's go. Oh, no. No, the clerk downstairs said she came upstairs about 45 minutes ago. Well, she must be here. Her radio's on. She certainly likes gay music. Look, look! What? What? Light under her door. She must be reading. Peggy, when you see something, don't say look so suddenly. You wait here. I'll go see. Oh, Marie! Marie! Jimmy! Jimmy! What? What? What is it? She's not here. Oh, Peggy. Oh, but she'll be back. Let's look for the name. It must be here someplace. The phone book. She was working from that. This is like trying to make your salary meet your expenses. You don't know where to start. Maybe it's in a piece of loose paper or something in here. Wait a minute. Maybe this is something. What? This page is marked. Jeffries. Jeffries. Well, it must mean something. Well, it could mean anything. There could be a thousand Jeffries. No phone number, no address. Yeah, but it seems to me like I've seen or heard that name someplace before. Well, we might as well forget it. Well, and you'd better get out of those clothes or we'll be spotted before we go half a block. Oh, yes, well, I'll borrow something from Marie. I'm sure she won't mind. You know, on the other hand, that name might be in Duval's private office, in his phone book or something. Oh, but we can't do that. If we could only figure out some way to get into the store. Yes? No, we couldn't do that. No. I'll go borrow a dress from Marie. I'll be right back. You wait. Sure, go ahead. Steal her clothes. We've done everything else. Jimmy! Ah! Jimmy! Jimmy! What? What? What is it? Oh, Jimmy! <laughs> 
Where's Marie? Where's Marie? Look. Oh. Is she? Yes, strangled. Poor kid. Oh. Hey, we better get out of here. Oh. Miss Lewis. Quick, oh. out the window. Is there a fire escape here? You better be here. That first step will be a honey. Miss Lewis. Miss Lewis. Miss Lewis, the radio's on too loud. Did you turn it down? Get me the police. Hurry, it's murder. Wait here, my man. Come on, honey. I'll never recognize this, Peggy. Hello, Peggy. Hi, Jimmy. You recognized us? Yeah, we gotta work fast. Come on. Afternoon, ma'am. Good afternoon. May I help you? I reckon you can. I'd... I'd like to buy some clothes for my Mary Lou here. Well, certainly. Won't you be seated? Thank you, ma'am. You all? Come on. I'll take this side, and you all take that side. On yes, side. Colonel. Oh, you got me talking like that. Cut the southern accent. Let's find out who Jeffries is. Yes, Joseph? I just saw Jimmy and Peggy come in. Are you sure? Yeah, they were dressed like old people. Oh, so that was them. I thought there was something funny about those two. I'm going to phone Inspector O'Hara. <laughs> Alice, you're putting on weight. Get me the police. I wonder what mischief they're up to now. Inspector O'Hara, please. Herbert! Will you get up? Oh, God. I'm so sorry, Mother. She tripped me. Oh, what's the matter with you? Take that dummy out of here. Yes, ma'am. Oh! Uh, what? Who is it? I don't know, some woman. Hello. Who? Oh, Madam Celeste, I'm sorry I kept you waiting. Yeah? Well, there's nothing here. We'd better get out while we got a chance. Oh, no, no. Let's look in the dressing room, huh? Well, Peggy, listen. Oh, come on. You know very well the clock is no, going we won't. No, we won't. No, we won't. Got all exits. I'll be right over. All right, Inspector. I will. Stay right by that door and don't let them out. in the basement? No, madam. Did you find anything? No. Peggy and Jimmy are here disguised as Southerners. Southerners? And we've got to find them. You guard the rear door. Inspector O'Hara is on his way here now. Yes, madam. Take this with you. In here. We've got to get out of here. Yeah, but how? We can't in these clothes. They'll know us. 
Well, we might as well sit here and wait for O'Hara. Oh, Jimmy, you know that... Look! Oh, no. Oh, no, not again. Oh, yes, Jimmy, we've just got to. It's the only way we can get out of here. Come well, on. I'll be the first guy to ever sat in an electric chair with a high hat on. Oh, silly. <laughs> Are they still here? I'm sure they are. We'll give the place a good going over. You stay at the door, see that nobody gets out. Brogan, you come with me. What's up there? Mr. Duvall's office. We'll look there first. You stay here. I'm all ready. Come on. Almost, almost. Just a minute. Looks like somebody's been here, Chiefy. It sure does. They must have gone out this way. Come on. Come on! I'm ready. Gee, honey, you look wonderful. Oh, do I? Hey, we gotta get out of oh, here. Yeah. Let's take a look in here. Take a look behind that door. Uh -huh. O'Hara. Wait a minute. Up here. Grogan. Grogan, where are you? Here, here, Chief. Oh, come from behind me. Look oh, out. Oh, I wonder what's in here. Come on, let's take a look. Well, they're not in here. That's right, Chiefy. They ain't in here. Thanks. You're welcome, Chibi. Telephone. In there, it might be something. Hello? Who? Peggy Rooney. Why, yes, we expect her in a few minutes. Uh, who's calling? Mr. Jeffries. Well, let me have your phone number, Mr. Jeffries, and I'll have her call you when she comes in. Yes, I got it. Goodbye. I gotta get that number. What'd you say? Nothing. Come on, we'll look someplace else. Oh, that phone call was from a man by the name of Jeffries. I want to check on him. Put it down. Oh, yes. Is it with a G or a J? I don't know. What's the difference? Make it a J. Okay. And the phone number is Hillside 2589. Hillside. Two, five, eight, nine. Got it? All right, huh? I got it right, Chief. Come on. Hillside, two, five, eight, nine. We got it. Yeah, we got it, Jimmy. We got it. Eight. Five. Eight. Two. Eight. Five. Eight. Nine. Nine. Yeah. Now, don't be nervous. Act natural and get the address. Yeah, Jimmy, you're shaking like a leaf. <laughs> Hello, this is Peggy Rooney. Not so loud. Not so loud. I I'm, this is Peggy Rooney. Mr. Jeffries called me. Oh, yes, Mr. Jeffries. I'll be right over. Uh, you're going all to pieces. Get the address. Oh, you're going all to pieces. Get the address. I mean, uh, well, where do you live? 143 Wentworth Drive. Oh, yes, sir. Oh, oh. Uh, goodbye. You see, you've got to keep a clear head. Excuse me, ladies. I've got to get a few dummies. Uh, we'd better go out through the basement. It's our only chance. Oh, yeah. Oh, Herbert. What'd you say? Them. No, but don't worry, we will. Inspector, will you please be as quiet as possible? Customers, you know. I understand. You just leave it to us. Uh-oh. O'Hara. Oh, wow. 
What's the idea? What? Knocking off my hat. I didn't knock your hat off. Somebody knocked mine off. Ah, oh, quit playing, will you? And come on. Ah, oh, Chief, you're always blaming me for nothing I didn't do. Imagine them coming in here dressed like old people, thinking I wouldn't recognize them. But I knew them just like that. Oh, this is fine, Peggy. We got to get out of here. But how? I don't know. Let me think. your pardon, Linda. Did you dress the window? Well, I don't know. I seem to have... Oh, uh, Herbert. I mean... Uh, no. The idea of dressing mannequins in wedding clothes at this time of the year. But, madam, people get married all the year round. Oh, nonsense. Undress these dummies and put sport clothes on them. Yes, ma'am. A dress? Now we're really in for it. Oh, but they can't do that. We've got to go out and see Mr. Jeffries. How can we? The place is surrounded with cops. I don't know. Jimmy, we've just got to take a chance. Come on. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Come, Toots. I'm going to take you first. Uh -huh. Somebody say something. They must have beat it before we arrived. Oh, but they couldn't have. I had every door guarded. Well, they're not here. We looked all over. They must have got what they wanted and scrammed. You mean the brooch? Yes. We'll take one more look around. Come on. Someplace. It could have gone far too. <laughs> you wax wolf, you. And somebody say something? Yes. Job is getting on my nerves, or else I need to. <laughs> That's very 
very clever, very clever. What's clever? Well, it's a novel idea to attract the people's attention. <laughs> Fine way for a dummy to act. <laughs> That's a funny idea. The dummy's dressing the window dresser. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy, Jimmy, look. <laughs> it's Brogan and O'Hara. Hey, that's Peggy and Jimmy. <laughs> hey, you two. There they are. They go. They must be around here someplace. Must be in this room somewhere. Oh. There they are. Beat it. Damn. After them. I got a gun. I got a gun. What? Have you got a gun? Oh, I'll shut up. Oh, oh well, him. I'll, I'll go get him. where I'd put you. She got away in the truck, but she won't get far. I'll have her picked up. Now, listen, O'Hara, she's on her way to the murderer. We've got to go after her. Well, that's where you're wrong. She's on her way, all right, but we've got the murderer. Now, listen, O'Hara, you'll have another murder on your hands. Wear your clothes. Doesn't make any difference. She's in danger, I tell you. Don't worry about her. She'll be safely in jail by night. Please, Inspector, I'm on the level. Peggy's in danger. Jeffrey's invited her to his house. Let's turn around and go back after her. I'll check on Jeffrey's at headquarters. By then, it'll be too late. Maybe even now our little body's lying there stiff and cold because a poor little kid didn't have a friend to help her. Just a friendless little child when she could have been saved. Oh, Chiefy, ain't it horrible? Please, Inspector. Please, Chiefy. Oh, all right, all right. Turn around, Duffy. 143 Winthrop Drive and step on it. Mr. Jeffries. Yes, I was expecting you. Je you are... Jeffries, won't you come in? <laughs> uh, maybe I'm intruding. It's close to dinner time and... Oh, so I've I... had my dinner. Do come in. Come into the living room. Only be a few moments. Does anybody know you came here? No, no, no one. That'll make it very private. Jeffries, my butler told me you were here. I'm surprised to see you, Mr. Van Allen, and also glad. Thank you. Would you sit down? Thank you. Oh, Mr. Van Allen, you and your wife are in great danger. Danger? How? Well, your butler, Jeffries, he's the murderer of Yvonne and the others. Jeffries, oh, come, Miss Rooney. 
He's too kind to do oh, it. A murderer acts like that sometimes to throw you off. Oh. <laughs> Won't you take your coat off? Oh, thank you. Oh, no. No, thanks. Now about Jeffries. You, of course, have proof to make such a charge against him. Oh, yes, you see. Jeffries was friendly with Yvonne. I don't know why, but, well, that has nothing to do with it. He murdered her on account of a brooch. A brooch? Mm -hmm. Oh, where is the brooch? Well, whether he gave it to her or not, I don't know. But, well, Yvonne didn't have it to give to him, so he killed her. It's fantastic. Too fantastic for Jeffries. Get on, Poopy. But go on. Well, you see, DeVella was also friendly with Yvonne. And when he found out about the brooch, he and Madame Celeste wanted for the money they could get out of it. Aren't you warm in that fur coat? <laughs> yes. Oh, no. Well, then Jeffries, knowing he had the brooch, killed him. But he didn't get the brooch. Marie was going to tell the police that she heard Yvonne mention Jeffrey's name several times. So he shut her up with a stocking. <laughs> Just like that. Now, I think we should call the police. Now, wait, Miss Rooney. We oh, but Mr. Van Allen... We must not be too hasty. Oh. You know, uh, you say he strangled them all with a stocking? Yes. And uh, he made a, a, a garret? Yes. Out of the stocking? Yes. And he slipped it around their necks? Yes, so you see, Mr. Van Allen, we mustn't act too quickly. No, now let me think. There must be some way... Uh... I'll call the police. Well, good. You give me the brooch. And we'll tell them everything. Can't you guys go any faster, or are you afraid of getting a ticket? Never mind. You watch the road, Duffy. I'll take care of him. Mr. Van Allen, you're the murderer. Yes. I killed them all. But Jeffrey... He didn't know anything. Just did all the phoning for me. Obeying orders. You're very smart, Miss Rooney. Oh, but Mr. Van and Allen... it's very unfortunate for I... you. If anything has happened to her O'Hara, it's your fault. Oh, quiet. Where's Jeffrey? I'm Jeffrey. What? What have we done with Peggy? She's in there, and I think she's in danger. Help me! Help Come on. Help! 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 Jimmy, help! Jimmy, help! Well, unlock it. Help! Oh! Oh! Put up your hat. Oh! Oh! Van Allen. Are you all right, Peggy? Oh, yes, but one more second, and I'd have joined the ladies, meaning Marie and Yvonne. What's that? Oh, that's Van Allen's little play toy, you know, like the silk stocking. Well, what about Jeffrey's? Just the butler. Van Allen used Jeffrey's name. What's the meaning of this? Police again. Why can't we be left alone? I demand an explanation. Okay, you'll get it. Mrs. Van Allen, your husband is the murderer of the two models in Duval. What? Harvey, is this true? Yes. I'm a little tired now, gentlemen. Can't we go? Is that all you have to say? No, just this. It should be a pleasure being in another jail because you won't be there. Harvey! Goodbye. Come on, let's go. Well, that's it. Oh, no, there's just one more thing. The brooch, all right. Come on, the brooch, the brooch. That brooch, it's like mine. Not like yours. It is yours. The one you have is an imitation. I'll have to keep it a while as evidence. Inspector, I feel ill. May I be excused? Yeah, you can go, you can go. Thank you. Well, so long, kids. I say, so long, kids. Yeah, he's busy. So long. Well, I'm certainly glad this case is over. Now, maybe I can get some rest. Are we going out tonight? Where? Well, we're going to the policeman's masquerade ball. Oh, no, we're not. I'll never wear another costume as long as I live. Oh, yes, you will. Oh, no, I won't. Oh, yes, you will. Oh, no, I won't. Oh, yes, you will. You think I look good in a cowboy suit? <laughs> 